right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. TC North, who has helped individuals and teams become high performers. He's trained elite athletes, including 31 Olympic athletes, which is uh, quite an achievement, some Olympic teams, even professional sports teams. And then he started working with salespeople and, and entrepreneurs and, and uh, other professionals, so which is what we want to kind of talk about today. So, so welcome, TC. Oh, thanks, John. Happy to be here. Yeah. So um, let's get right into it. So, you know, your background is in high performance psychology and, and you began training Olympic and professional athletes. Um, so how did you transition into into training and helping sales professionals? Because, you know, some people would say, well, that's a big jump from one to the other, right? Yeah. Well, it's interesting. So I'll go to the end of the story. And the end of the story is that there's three groups of folks that I work really well with because of how they think and, and what they do with their lives. And, and I call them at-risk professions. Right. And commission salespeople are one of those groups. Entrepreneurs are one of those groups. And elite athletes are one of those groups, which essentially means you perform really well today. You get to eat and you get to stay. <laughs> if you don't, you're gone pretty quick. Yeah. And, and it's a pretty short street there. It's not a long road before you're uh, off the bench or off the team or starving because you're not selling anything. So the way I started was uh, I, I felt I feel very privileged for all the work I've ever done. And I learned so much from my elite athletes. And I'm in Boulder, Colorado. So there's elite athletes everywhere in this right. town. It's like, you know, there's a there's a there's a joke. You roll a nickel down the street and you hit five athletes. <laughs> and and, uh, and we're talking about world class athletes. Yeah. And, it's about true because um, we have all the endurance athletes that train out here and, and in San Diego where you are. It's mm -hmm. the other place, but they like the altitude out here. So what happened, John, was um, I've been doing my work and I had a clinical practice as well. And uh, I got asked. I've been doing a lot of pre presenting and uh, a company said um, the, the company is PMS, which I think is a really funny name for a company. It's Particle Measuring Systems. All oh, right. <laughs> but they, they actually go by PMS. It's like, really? Okay, I guess that's memorable. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Marketing. It doesn't matter what's good or bad. It's remarkable. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Only, the, only one thing worse than people talking about you, and that's people not talking about you, right? <laughs> exactly. So the president of PMS contacted me and said, you know, I've heard about your work with athletes, and I have an international sales team, about 80 salespeople. Most of what, of what we sell, almost all of our sales are into China and Asia, even though they're a Boulder-based company. And he said, you know, my folks are coming in. I would like you to present to them your work on confidence and how to be your best because I don't want them to change anything. It's the Asian crisis not happening here, so it's hard to get your head around, wrap your head around it. But it will get through it. It's the only quarter in 16 years we've actually dipped. Mm -hmm. And so they're all freaking out. So I gave this presentation, John. This is back, oh, geez, a long time ago. Uh, 80s, 1980s. Yeah, that kind of dates me, doesn't it? Well, and, it's okay. Uh, I remember the 80s. Don't worry. <laughs> for, and, and for those of you who are like under 30, yeah, there were some decades before the millennium. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the 80s were fun. I actually like the 80s yeah. a lot. And uh, so I, I was presenting the sales team. And John, I've always remembered this. You ever have one of those experiences where you, you're out of your body and you're seeing yourself? Yep. I don't remember what I was saying, but I was—I had my cowboy boots on, which I always wear, uh, at least when I present, and they had uh, leather soles, and I was sliding across this floor. My arms are wide open, and I'm looking at these guys, and all their mouths are wide open. Their eyes are like this, I'm like, oh, my gosh, these guys have never heard this stuff before. <laughs> So that literally was the birth of me working with salespeople because they loved it. And that company did great, by the way. And I just started working with salespeople. And then two of my best friends were management consultants. And they kind of said the same thing. That's, you know, entrepreneurs would love the work you're doing with athletes about how to use your mind to create success. I'm going, really? And they go, yeah. And so they drug me into entrepreneurial companies. And sure enough, they were right. So how do you, I mean, when you worked with elite athletes and, and that, I mean, obviously, self-belief and confidence is massive, right? I mean, you, if you're going to be an elite athlete, athlete, uh, athlete and win, I mean, you have to have huge confidence and belief that you can actually do it. So how do you, I mean, number one, how did you teach athletes to do that? And then how do you uh, parlay that and teach people, salespeople, to be that kind of confident? Yeah, uh, so... 
then there's a fine line. So I do want to explain the fine line of, uh, you said, sort of massive confidence. Yes, and too much is not okay either. Right. Sure. Yeah, yeah, because then you get into egotistic, <laughs> and and that's always a, a downfall. It doesn't matter when you're in sales or athletics or leadership. You know, sure. you get in, you know, I'm better than you, and I don't have to do anything else. You're, you're dead because everybody's improving. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you go there, you stop improving. So there's a lot of confidence. But the other thing to, to hear is people th you know, see some of these athletes and they think they never have fears. They all have fears. Mm -hmm. they, have fail they have the same fears that we all do. They have fear of failures. They have fear of their relationships not working out. They have fear of travel. They have all kinds of stuff. So how do you teach the confidence is this here's this here's a simple there's there's like tons and tons away and i'll give you some um, resources at the end if you want yeah that, please do yeah you know, one of uh, the most simple that I always use with athletes is to create a movie in your mind of so salespeople create a movie in your mind of being your best it doesn't matter whether you're selling popsicles as a kid uh, it doesn't matter whether you're selling an idea to a spouse you know when you're selling something you're in the flow in the flow, it's always easy. You don't think a lot. It just kind of on automatic, mm -hmm. and and so we always have them create that that movie in their minds, and then we create in the the uh, time up to a competition, very specific times to do that, um, right up to sometimes within the last minute. Mm -hmm. And there's always the combination of what we call distraction and complete focus. Right. And you see right. see athletes a lot like listening to music. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's the distraction phase. Do anything but think about the event because you can't if you think too much, it just tires you out. Mm -hmm. So then when you think you want to just think about being your best, not in your fears, not the stuff that can go wrong. Um, so that's the simplest. And I, I teach that to everybody. I, I did work at the Olympic Training Center. Every athlete that goes to the Olympic Training Center gets taught that kind of visualization. And you, you see you hear pros do it. And if you watch the Olympics, you'll see people do it. And you know, we don't have Olympics on right now, but they're always showing people in their pre routines. You can like skiers, you can see them like their eyes closed and they're doing this and, and their body's actually going through the motion as they go through the course. And that's very powerful because then it also, it not only engages the, the mind, but it's also connecting to the neurons of the muscles. Mm -hmm. So um, tell me a little bit about mindful power um, and what that means and how that can help salespeople be more successful. Yeah, thank you. And it's uh, sort of the le latest evolution of my work. And we hear about mindfulness everywhere in sure. the news. And a lot of it's junk, quite frankly. <laughs> You know, truly what you want to do with, with uh, there's mindfulness of self with others and with the planet. First of all, there's sort of three levels, and there's probably some others, but those are the most basic. When I talk about mindfulness here, it's about self. And even within the self, there's, there's mindfulness of your thoughts, there's mindfulness of your feelings. Uh, and what you want to do is, is be able to relax enough as a salesperson where you have this part. I always point this because this is where the prefrontal cortex is. Mm -hmm. This is the most advanced part of one's brain. When you're stressed, when you're worried, you, res you release cortisol, and cortisol actually blocks the use of this. So it's very important. So one, of, one use of mindfulness is to relax and be at peace and to have your whole brain available to you. The, uh, the second level of that is to be more aware of what you're thinking and what you're feeling. Uh, because are you feeling confident? Are you going to fear? Are you going into concern? Are you listening? Are you not listening? Are you really paying attention enough to you to know what's going on with the other person or the group that you're speaking to? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it totally does. Um, but, I, but I think that um, in, in the world we live in today, I think this, this is a real challenge for some people to achieve that kind of mindfulness, right? Because you know, we're surrounded by so many distractions. We almost do anything in our power not to be with ourselves, right? You know, we tend to, you know, we're on our, we're on our phone, we're on Instagram, we're on Snapchat, we're just constantly checking. So how do you get people to sort of um, take that time to really understand what being mindful really means and how to discipline themselves to, to do that? Well, and, and I work with pretty all high performers. Mm -hmm. And so high performers always want to do what's best for them. Right. And, and the reality is, is without that mindset, I don't have any luck. Right. I don't, my work doesn't, I don't work very well with people who already aren't committed to be high performers, uh, whether, no matter what the field. Um, so that's, that's one is that initial mindset. Mm -hmm. 
because you have to do what maybe is culturally different. Mm -hmm. One of the things I teach people, and this is one of my favorite articles, is uh, distractions make you dumb. Right. <laughs> and, and this is scientifically based statement. And, and here's the quickie on that, because I want everybody listening to, mm -hmm. to understand yeah. this, Jim. And distractions are not only external distractions, but it's what you just said. It's like I decide to look at email. I'm mm -hmm. thinking about something that I, instead of focusing. It can take up to 23 minutes for your brain when you're fully in the flow and you just get distracted. can take up to 23 minutes before the brain is actually 100% back in the flow. Right. And every time you're distracted, you lose part of what's called fluid intelligence. Mm -hmm. You know, there's all these different intelligences. Right. So let's say you're an average person. You've got an IQ of 100, uh, 80. Uh, IQ of 80 is borderline developmentally disabled. If you get enough distractions during a day, again, this has been scientifically demonstrated, you can drop your IQ from 100 to almost 80. Right. So a normal person can be almost developmentally disabled with enough distractions tired brain, fatigued brain, distracted brain, or if you're a genius, you only become average. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's, a, so that's a really fascinating point there. So for anybody listening, particularly those who may not be high performers or who want to become high performers, right? Um, that, as you say, every time I'm allowing a little distraction, it may be, to me, it may be inconsequential or um, something just popped up on my phone. I'll glance over here at it. But you're saying that that actually... Could take twenty three. Could take me twenty three minutes to really get back to the core of what I was doing before. And if you add them up on the, as you say, over the course of a day, I mean, it's kind of frightening in some ways, right? It, it pretty much means we're never totally in the flow. Yeah. Yeah, because very few times during the day do we actually go twenty three minutes without distracting ourselves or getting distracted. Mm -hmm. So, and, so being in the flow. Um, so that's almost that. That's the same or similar to presence, right? I mean, you you also have to you know have a presence or be present. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm going to tie that into the the question you asked a while ago that I've mm -hmm. answered only in part because I got off into some pieces of it. The mindful power concept. Mm -hmm. So can I go back to yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Please do. Yeah. So the mindful power concept is 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 really how do. You, on one on one scale, kind of think of it as a a, a, four, a matrix of four boxes. Mm -hmm. So you got mindless and you got mindful, mm -hmm. which means mindful. You're very much a master of your own mind, your own thinking. I'm use that as a very short definition. Never perfect, but you're master enough. Sure, and it's never perfect. And then this other scale, it's how much personal power do I have? Low versus high. And so personal power includes courage, it includes confidence, uh, it includes emotional intelligence, and there's, a, there's several pieces to that. But you, what, what you want to be as a, a leader and, a, and or a salesperson is you want to be in a quadrant one person, which is where you're both mindful and you have a lot of personal power. And there's quadrant two, which is you have a lot of personal power, but you're closer to mindless than mindful. Right. That's actually the most dangerous person to be around because uh, they're unpredictable, they're erratic, and we all know people like that. <laughs> yeah, we won't go there. <laughs> but it truly, truly is, is the most dangerous of leadership personalities because they do have a lot of pers both personal power and maybe positional power. And if you got that combination and you have a low level of mindfulness, th that is a little bit scary. Mm -hmm. So in sales, more and more, it's, you know, we, we, I mean, we used to be transactional, now we're relational, and now sure. it keeps evolving. So if you follow the brain part of that, it is more and more, we want more emotional intelligence, we want more mindfulness, we want salespeople that are in control. If you're selling to me, John, and you show up nervous, I don't trust you. Right. It's that simple. Because mm -hmm. my brain's going, why is he nervous? What's wrong? <laughs> is yeah. he lying to me? Yeah. Yeah, and and I think that's a and I think that's a that's a perfect illustration because um, if I turn up to sell to you, baseline you would expect me to have confidence in the product or service that I'm selling to you, and confidence in my ability to show you the value of that, right? So that kind yeah. of that basis, as you said, that just gets you in the door, right? That's like you know baseline. Um, yeah. In order for me to really, so with the with the high performers you work with, what what's the next level of how I would show you that I'm somebody that you should really that you really want to listen to? 
Uh, so sorry, I wanted to complete one more yeah, piece. Yeah, go ahead. If you can hold that question. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I kind of lost it because I wanted to finish this one piece. So, so the other piece is when you show up with confidence, remember in selling, and it's the great salespeople, the people who make quarter million dollars on up, mm -hmm. they're in service. They're not selling something. They're serving a client. And that's a big mental difference. Mm -hmm. And so the mindfulness piece of that is, can you get out of yourself and actually, like I just had a, a meeting with somebody and, and he cannot afford sort of the bigger thing that I offer, sure. but we found him a really nice, smaller piece that he may or may not do, but it just felt good. He's a really good guy in his small company. And if mm -hmm. I can help, I'd love to help him. Right. So that, that, that mindset of not, I'm here to sell, but I'm here to serve is really critical and now you're being mindful of the other person's need and and just on that point though is right and some people sometimes confuse this idea of looking to serve uh, the customer as basically doing everything and giving into everything the customer says or doing everything and going back to your own company and saying oh they want this you got to do this for them but that's not it at all right because sometimes no. you're not serving the customer by giving them everything they want right no no, and, and sometimes in my world, people ask me for stuff that's the wrong stuff to ask for. Right. And so my job is to help them really understand what they need, you know, and go deeper into their needs, and then what's a better solution. So, um, uh, so what are some of the what are some of the steps that somebody could take to start to um, get a little bit more mindful, build a little bit more confidence, and you know, really start that process of maybe wanting to lift themselves out of mediocrity into excellence. Well, I, I think the confident piece, I absolutely recommend the being your best visualization mm -hmm. and, and do that daily, a couple times a day. You can't do that too much. Right. And what's really important with that, John, is you don't just don't go through the, the thoughts in your head, but you create a little bit of the confident feeling every time you do. Mm -hmm. And then practice that. Make a pre-routine before you get on the phone, before you get out of your car, if you're doing something live and in person. Mm -hmm. Incorporate that into your pre-routine. Also incorporate some breathing work. Uh, the breath work truly is um, a gift mm -hmm. because w when you take control of your breath, you're actually taking control of your autonomic physiology, which is your heart rate, your respiration, your perspiration, your release of cortisol, your uh, release of all the hormones associated with stress. They're all tied into your breathing pattern. Mm -hmm. And it is an amazing gift that we ha it's both on auto that your bre the breathing is on automatic and manual. Mm -hmm. So taking manual control of it, you actually can control your physiology. And it's normal to be a little bit nervous. That's okay. Sure. sure. You just don't want to be too nervous. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're not a little bit nervous, then you're reckless, right? <laughs> yeah, a little bit nervous actually makes you better. Mm -hmm. actually made you better you know athletes will tell you if i don't have butter like I, there's a famous quote an old baseball player if i don't have butterflies in my stomach going to the plate i should i should get out of this sport right because and, it does get you up a little yeah. bit and i like that piece about breathing because in this again in this age of when people are trying to s sell you software and apps for everything i mean breathing is free right so i mean you can pretty still last time i checked st so you uh <laughs> this is something that you could adopt tomorrow or today and start doing and it just getting into a habit of yeah and so i'm going to i'm going to give a quick formula mm -hmm. uh, because of the the nervous system the the way to control your breathing if you want to relax make your exhalations about twice as long as your inhalations mm -hmm. and that will usually force your inhalations to be a little bit deeper as well but you don't have to think about it so you can do a three six count a four eight count a two four count whatever is comfortable to you but the exhalation is slower, you relax. If you're tired, if you're uh, you, like, uh, if you, I have to go present at seven o'clock in the morning sometimes. It's like, mm. really? Know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a morning person. I know, I'm, I'm right there with you. If somebody said to me, you want, I want you to present at 11 o'clock tonight, I'd be like, sounds good to me. But if we're yeah. 7 a.m. in the morning, I'm like, oh. Oh, we're on the same schedule, yes. John. So, so there, it's the reverse. If you if you've ever been in a weight room or somewhere where that, mm -hmm. like that, you hear people go. <sighs> yeah. You know, people think that's about super oxygenating their body. It's mm -hmm. really not. It's about stimulating the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system, which actually excites you, makes you stronger. So, the sharp inhalations actually will wake you up and make you stronger. 
Oh, well, great. Well, listen, this has been a fascinating interview, TC. Um, there's probably a lot more we could talk about. So I'm hoping you'll come back another time and uh, we can dive into some of these a little bit deeper. Um, but at the, at the last few moments here, I'd love you to tell the viewers a little bit more about yourself, how they can learn more about you and what you do. Sure. Um, I invite everybody. I've got over 100 articles on my website. It's all around these topics of high performance. There's a whole section on confidence. I really invite you to do that. The latest post is, um, I might not remember the exact title, but something like 12 techniques to uh, gain more confidence or improve your confidence. And then each one of those techniques has a whole article behind it. So you can look at that one post and any of the techniques that make sense to you, you can just click on that and then get the full technique. Um, so that's a great resource. Of course, my, my website, all free. Um, I do have a book, Fearless Leaders, yep. and that's where yep. this work started. And it's what you've heard is the evolution of mm -hmm. some of that work. The How to Create Mindful Moments Anytime, Anywhere is one of my favorite pieces of that book. Um, does that help? Yeah, that, that helps absolutely. And obviously, we'll put the links on um, underneath here for anybody who is listening um, and watching. Listen, I wanted to thank you again, TC. This has been really, um, really insightful. I think it's it's really pertinent stuff because, I think, as I said earlier, I think people are getting so distracted today that even that one nugget of knowing that the more you get distracted, the dumber you get. I'm, I'm going to yeah. take that with me. Um, yeah. Unless I'm too dumb to remember it and I've got too distracted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, listen, John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline, CRM, TC, Noor, thank you very much for this. And uh, we'll see you all again yeah. soon. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.